Roller coasters. Today, they're everywhere with over 5,000 different coasters worldwide and an entire industry dedicated to advancing coaster technology and producing greater thrills for riders. But their history is long and complex and dates back centuries. So where did they come from? And how did we go from the primitive designs of Coney Island to the advanced technology of today? This is a short history of the roller coaster. The world's oldest roller coasters were inspired by inventions called Russian mountains. In the 17th century, hills of ice were built in palace gardens in St. Petersburg. Called sliding mountains in Russian, they were built to a height of around 70 or 80 feet with a 50 degree drop and were reinforced with wooden supports covered in ice. This became a popular pastime for Russia's upper class. Even Catherine the Great constructed a more advanced version in her palace gardens in 1784, relying on wheeled carts instead of sleds. This is why the Spanish and French terms, as well as other languages, for a roller coaster are Montagne Russa or Montagne Russa. This directly translates to Russian mountain. The next advancement in the Russian mountain concept would come in France. The pastime was possibly introduced to the French by occupying Russian soldiers after Napoleon's defeat in 1815 to 1816. In July of 1817, a French baker by the name of Nicolas Beaujon constructed an amusement park on the Champs-Élysées in Paris named Parc Beaujon, which featured a gigantic construction inspired by the Russian mountains called the Promenade Aryanaise, Aerial Strolls. This gigantic coaster featured wheeled carts secured into metal grooves which were towed to the top of a tower and then released down gigantic slides on either side. King Louis XVIII is recorded as having visited the park and within a matter of years there were seven other similar rides in Paris. In the beginning, these rides were exclusively for the upper class, but their real success in Europe would come in the mid-19th century. In 1845, a new amusement park called Tivoli opened in Copenhagen, Denmark, targeted at the middle class. This park featured roller coasters as permanent attractions and was immediately successful, even opening what was possibly the first ever attempt at a looping coaster, the Centrifugal Railway, in 1846. In Europe, these simple roller coasters were becoming very popular, but the first construction that we would recognize as a modern roller coaster was still decades away, and it would come from the United States. In the 1850s, a mining company in Pennsylvania began offering rides on its 14 km downhill railway to thrill seekers. By 1872, this had become a lucrative side business for them, and many other railway companies had been inspired to do similar things on days when ridership and loads were low. Inspired by this idea, a man named Lamarcus Adner Thompson began work on a gravity switchback railway designed for thrill seekers, opening the first model at Brooklyn's Coney Island in 1884. These switchback railways featured two towers with tracks stretching in between. Guests would climb the first tower, boarding bench-like cars and riding down the 180 meter track to the opposite tower. Guests would then climb to the top of this second tower and ride back. Immediately bringing competition to the industry, Philip Hinkle responded in 1885 with the world's first full circuit roller coaster called the Gravity Pleasure Road at Coney Island. This roller coaster featured several advancements, including a lift hill, anti rollback mechanisms, side friction wheels, and much more. But Lamarcus Thompson was not to be outdone. In 1886, Thompson responded to Hinkle's advancements by producing the Scenic Railway, patenting the concept. This was a full circuit roller coaster complete with tunnels and scenery that offered a complete ride experience. After patenting the concept, Thompson sold scenic railway models across the United States, with dozens being constructed to the same design across the late 19th and early 20th centuries. As it grew in popularity, more and more experimentation began to take place among roller coaster designers. In the 1880s, Lena Beecher experimented again with the vertical loop, producing the Flip Flap Railway. This roller coaster was notorious for its excessive g-force due to the abrupt design of its loop, which caused many riders serious injuries. Inversions in roller coasters would not be experimented with again for almost half a century due to this failure. Another prominent designer was John Miller, who produced the first under friction roller coasters in the 1910s. Through these innovations and the popularity of the roller coaster at Coney Island and at other amusement parks, they quickly became a mainstay attraction of amusement parks around the world. The early 20th century coasters are the earliest that we still have examples of today. 
Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park opened in 1902 and is the oldest operating coaster in the world, the last of the side friction roller coasters of that era left standing. There are also several of Lamarcus Thompson's early scenic railways, including Scenic Railway at Luna Park, Melbourne from 1912 and Ruchibanan at Tivoli Gardens from 1914. Other prominent examples of those early wooden coasters still remaining today include those at parks like Kennywood and Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Fun fact! In 1902, Coney Island opened another attempt at an innovative coaster called the Cannon Coaster. This roller coaster attempted to incorporate a leap over a gap in the tracks. However, in safety testing, it became apparent that even a slight change in the weight distribution of the cars could result in a failure to make the jump, and so the element was obviously scrapped. However, the Great Depression resulted in an end to the golden age of roller coasters, as amusement parks globally went into a decline, resulting in less demand. That ebb in demand is considered to have lasted until 1972. However, that didn't mean that innovation had completely ceased in the decades in between. In 1955, Walt Disney opened his Disneyland theme park to the public. Attempting to completely reinvent the amusement park concept and create a destination for both children and adults alike, Disney sought an innovative attraction that would bring guests to his park. Working with Californian firm Arrow Development, Disneyland opened the Matterhorn bobsleds in 1959, the first roller coaster to utilize tubular steel track. Unlike conventional wooden rails, tubular steel could be bent in any direction while still maintaining its structural integrity and strength. This allowed for elements such as loops, corkscrews, steeper drops, and higher bank turns to be incorporated into roller coaster designs. This sparked a massive renaissance for roller coasters, both steel and wood, in the early 1970s. In 1975, Arrow produced the first modern roller coaster to feature inversions, Corkscrew at California's Knott's Berry Farm, possibly the first roller coaster to safely incorporate inversions. The 1970s would also see the revival of the vertical loop and the innovations of shuttle coasters and flywheel launched coasters. But far from steel sending wooden coasters extinct, the innovation in the industry actually encouraged the revival of classic wooden coasters, including the Beast at Kings Island, which opened in 1979 as the longest wooden coaster in the world and retains that record today. The 1970s and 1980s saw several other manufacturers enter the industry, all bringing their own innovations and attempting to experiment and push the boundaries of roller coaster dynamics even further. Vekoma, Intamin, Bollinger and Mabillard, and many others would all come to the fore through the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. As a result, these decades were marked by innovation the first inverted coaster, the first alpine and bobsled coasters, and coasters that went higher, further, and faster, and with more and more inversions. But in 1989, Arrow would set yet another new era in coaster history into motion when they unveiled Magnum XL200 at Ohio's Cedar Point. This was the first full circuit roller coaster to exceed 200 feet in height, becoming dubbed as a hypercoaster. This record breaking new coaster set into motion an era known as the Coaster Wars, a sort of records race between parks and manufacturers who sought further and further innovation to continually break height and speed records and have the world's biggest and most marketable roller coasters. Magnum's full circuit height record would be broken several times between the 1990s and today, first by the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in 1994, Fujiyama at Fuji Q Highland in 1996, Millennium Force at Cedar Point in 2000, the world's first giga coaster. Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Sparland later that same year. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point in 2003, the world's first strata coaster. And finally, King Dakar at Six Flags Great Adventure in 2005, the current world record holder at 456 feet. Meanwhile, the speed record was broken by Steel Phantom at Kennywood in 1991. Tower of Terror at Dreamworld in 1997, Dodonpa at Fujiku Highland in 2001, Top Thrill Dragster in 2003, King Dakar in 2005, and finally Formula Rossa at Ferrari World in 2010, the current record holder at 240 km an hour. While the obsession with record breaking has since subsided, the advancements in technology that these rides produced have resulted in the roller coaster industry as we know it today. Roller coasters are continually becoming more advanced and capable of more and more complex maneuvers and layouts, and dozens of manufacturers from all over the globe are producing roller coasters on a scale never before seen. 
as of the time of writing, there are 5,777 roller coasters around the world and more being constructed all the time. They include some of the most advanced technological and engineering feats that humanity has ever accomplished. And of course, they are a load of fun. Thank you so much for watching this brief history of the roller coaster. Make sure you subscribe for more content like this and click the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. If you'd like to join the conversation, get involved in our Discord server, link is in the description. I'd like to give a massive shout out to Fish Fudge who just became our newest channel member. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd also like to join and become a channel member for perks like shout outs, giveaways and exclusive content, there is also a link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.